my dear crystal lovers welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is am i am a small business owner and i have a company named avuv at my webshop avuv.com you can go and find the most amazing and spectacular and ethically sourced crystals from all over the world and i will leave you a link for it in the description below so how are you guys doing it is Definitely spring here in Copenhagen. A lot of things are going on right now for a lot of people. And uh, yeah, I would say spring is always really hectic and intense for me, but this year it is off the charts. And I think it's like that for a lot of people. That's definitely what I hear from a lot of people. Every single day ever since Spring Equinox, there's been something new. Someone moving into their dream home or going bankrupt. <laughs> there's a lot of that going on here in, in Denmark right now. Or, you know, breaking up. So there are like these huge tectonic plates that are moving for people right now. For us and for me, uh, I guess the biggest thing that's happening this spring is that our son is going to school and um, yeah it's a big change for us because we've never been domesticated people we've most of the time just been you know nomads moving around and being really mutable in our lifestyle working anywhere and everywhere and uh, that's definitely going to be a, like a huge shift for us that now we have to have work hours in the way that most people do. And we can't just take off and go on adventure whenever we feel like it. So we're putting everything into place right now so that we're going to have a really lovely and nice and fun experience over the next 10 years with our son going to school. But I guess that's kind of a minor thing in the big scheme because uh, obviously there's a lot of other stuff going on just in the world. I tend not to look so much at what's going on in the media, but more what's coming up for my friends and our family. And there's just a lot going on right now. One of the things that I, I do whenever there are times like these when Everything just seems to be, you know, up in the air and you don't necessarily know where all of the balls are going to fall, right? I love to focus in a little bit more on the analog things in life. One of the things that I do to calm myself down because I can get swept away with all of these activities really quickly, but I feel like the more analog that I get, the more analog things that I do, the more it calms me down. So like these little things in life, like cooking and uh, making pancakes, setting a nice table. We also went on a, like a little local flea market trip, my friend and I, where I got a few things that I want to show you. I, I actually thrive in the chaos and you know, the unknowingness of life. But I also know that at some point I will burn myself out because I want to do everything all at once and I want to do everything yesterday, right? But just to keep myself on, on a good balance so that I don't burn out, I love doing um, some of the smaller things in life. For example, meditate. So I've stepped up my meditation. So hopefully if you're in the same situation as me, where everything is completely wild all around you uh, and things are changing and shifting by the hour, hopefully that's um, a tip for you to maybe go a little bit more inwards and yeah, just to keep the good balance. So we went to this little local flea market and of course it's nothing compared to the suburbs but I did pick up a few nice things so mom if you're watching skip this part because I found a little this little wooden box 
at the flea market. It's just really pretty and uh, my mom's birthday is coming up. So uh, I'm gonna give this to her. It's by a Danish brand. I just love these natural materials. You guys know that if you follow me. She collects these little teak wood boxes and this one was just in such a good condition. If I have time I'm gonna have it engraved and then I can give it to her. Then I picked up another one of these. I have them in two different sizes. I showed you in, a, in another video. I just love these. This is a Belgian container, what do you say, like a apothecary container where you would have pills and medicine, but I think they're just stunningly beautiful and I love the color and I love this little bubble lid. You can use this to have Epsom salt inside or herbs or like, I think maybe for this one I'm gonna have sage. Then I picked up a few books again because I definitely want to hook up on the more analog things in life now that things are going on so fast, right? So I know that if I'm just sitting and scrolling on my phone, it's just gonna add to the pace. I don't know if you can hear the traffic outside, but uh, that's how it always goes in these videos. There's a lot going on outside. Okay, so I got these two books from Paulo Coelho and I'm really looking forward to reading them. I've only ever read The Alchemist and I love that. This, I'm really happy about. This was exactly what I needed. What else did I get? So I found this terracotta pot right here. It's not too small. I feel like if they're too small, it's just gonna dry everything out. But I mean, terracotta pots, you can always use a little bit more of those. Then I got this tablecloth. It is a little bit too yellow for the apartment so I'm gonna bring this one to the plant house too with the terracotta pot and I just love having these more like tactile things around me especially in hectic times right we're probably just gonna use this for picnics and in the garden it's not too precious I just love the embroidery let me know in the in the comments you guys if you feel like it's therapeutic to you to have natural materials and tactile materials around you when when things are a little bit crazy. Yeah, so that's what I've been up to. But it's almost like having one hand in cold water and one hand in warm water, right? Because you have both sides going on right now and I'm just really trying to find a good balance between the two. The crystal that I'm gonna show you today is of course one of my favorite crystals and I know I say that about all of my crystals. This one is probably the one that I would say that comes closest to just my personality. It's the one that I feel like I vibe with the most and it is of course pyrite. I've shown you guys a bunch of these pyrite clusters, but I have three new ones coming up for you on the shop today. I am so in love with these and I have a big one out in my kitchen and I love it so much. I appreciate it every single day. So if you don't know about these pyrites, pyrite is an iron sulfide mineral, but it is it, these cubes, they are crystals. And these pieces that I have for you are from Navajo in Spain. They are my favorite kinds of pyrite because these are natural formations, natural cubes. And what you see here is a, um, a matrix of limestone. So this is how they actually grew out in nature. That to me and to most people is just absolutely mind blowing that nature created this. These and then the diodes are the crystals that I for sure sell the most out of. And uh, I can understand why, because they're absolutely stunning. Then I have another one here and this one is just so sculptural. They all are. I always go for the most sculptural pieces that you would want to have in your space and that you would want to look at every single day, right? This one has kind of a flat bottom on the matrix and then these amazing cubes. 
So this one is pretty big and that's what you want to go for when it comes to these clusters. You want to go for the big cubes and also uh, the pieces that are the most sculptural. These are rare, they're hard to come by, but I know you guys appreciate them. And then this one with some smaller cubes, but again you can see that all in all it just makes up a really beautiful sculpture. Always when we have guests over, they always comment on, on the pyrites because they're just mind-blowing. And uh, that's also what I would interpret pyrite as, especially these types of pyrites. So you can get the pyrites from all over the world, but it's really rare that you get these enormous cubes that you get from these in, uh, from Navajo in Spain. The way that I interpret crystals is, I guess, the same way that you would interpret a piece of music or a sound or a color. So it's my personal interpretation and it's very much about what it inspires in me. With these pyrites, they do inspire a lot of energy, a lot of expansiveness. So whenever I want to stretch my mind, pyrite is the crystal that I go for. It could be in, in, in any situation, right? But I would say definitely in work situations where I'm doing something creatively or I have to come up with just solutions that are outside the box, pyrite is a great inspiration for me. Pyrite is often known as a money crystal so an abundance crystal, but especially around money. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a money crystal, like if you buy a crystal you will win the lottery or get a raise, I would never ever say that. But again, because it is a, a mind-expanding crystal, at least it is for me, and, um, and in that way it's an abundance crystal, it's also a crystal that, of course, would inspire you to find different avenues of income because you are thinking outside of the box, right? So I think that's maybe why people see it as a money crystal. Maybe it's just the color, like the gold color, that they feel like it's just associated with, with, the, with wealth. The way that I work with crystals is that I have them strategically placed throughout my space so that there are these markers and these reminders in my everyday life of what my intention is. For example, I have my pyrite in the kitchen so that every morning when I wake up and I have my coffee, I can look at how amazing nature is and how amazing life is. And that's the first thing that confronts me in the morning. I've had pirate in my workspace and I absolutely love it for that. And in a situation where I want to speed things up and I want to, you know, really expand myself, expand my mind and, um, and, and get inspiration from all places, pyrite is the crystal for me. So it's named after its ability to ignite fire. And fire really is the vibe that I'm getting from pyrite and the inspiration that I get from this beautiful crystal. It is a wild and fiery energy in all ways possible. Another thing that I feel it inspires for me is a really optimistic and positive approach all about the possibilities of life, the possibilities and probabilities of nature. And I've sold a lot of these and um, I love it when, they, when I have crystals that are, I can talk about all day about um, the metaphysical stuff, right? But just as a geological piece, as a sculpture of nature, these are absolutely stunning and amazing and beautiful to have around just for the pure beauty and aesthetic of it but also of course for the wonder of nature that it actually is. Pyrite has a hardness of six 
which means that it's quite soft so I wouldn't recommend it for jewelry but I would most definitely recommend it as sculptures in your space. It's also great for setting intentions so let's say that you have an intention about being more passionate and fiery about certain aspects in your life. It could be anything that you're passionate about, right? But of course I would go for something um, creative. But it could really be anything. It could also be that you are really passionate about making an income and attracting abundance. So of course you can use it as an abundance crystal. But the main thing is that it's something that you're really passionate about and having this sculpture in your space where it reminds you daily of, you know, prioritizing your passions. It's really easy to overlook your passions, especially when there's a lot of things going on. And maybe you have a lot of things that you definitely have to do. Sometimes we downgrade our passions just because life happens, right? That's at least that's the way that I love to work with crystals. So it's a really practical approach and a practical way of incorporating metaphysics and spirituality into your everyday life. I'm not so much about big ceremonies or big events when it comes to spirituality. I'm much more about everyday spirituality. So wherever I can get metaphysics and spirituality into my already existing lifestyle the better for me it's definitely just a more sustainable approach to spirituality to have really good habits in my life more than you know going to a silent retreat once a year or having a healing session once a year for me everyday spirituality is really what makes the difference so it's not something that's separate from my everyday normal life. That's what I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope you are keeping up and keeping balanced, taking good care of yourself. So I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, share and subscribe. It helps me to know what you guys want me to talk about. And it also helps others to find this content if that is what they're looking for. I want to wish you the most amazing day with so much love to you and to yours.